five facts about the Salton Sea. One. The Salton Sea is the largest inland body of water in California. Two. It is a nesting ground for a huge migration of birds. Just one of the many stops on their way around the world. Three. Agro-industrial runoff ends up at the sea. Thousands of fish wash up dead on the shore. Four. Each year, the sea is evaporating more and more, exposing the toxic playa. Five. When the wind picks up, it carries this toxic dust to the communities and the people in the surrounding areas. But it wasn't always this way. Torres Martinez is a, is a nation of people that have always been here. Torres Martinez is just another family of people that have been here forever. We have our own creation story of how we evolved here. And, you know, there are stories of how migration happened, but our story is that we've always been here. The deer signifies the, the time when our ancestors and our elders remember, you know, under a certain time and the season, you could see the deer, which were plentiful, come down and drink from the waters in the shores of the sea, uh, which is something you don't see anymore. It, it, times change, the deer become scarce, but that's why we hold that, that uh, vision, deer. It was, it was a time that life was beautiful as we saw it. You know, our traditions and our culture was orally passed down, the, you know, all the tradition and customs, and, and as time went by, it kind of almost died out, but now we're reviving the culture, the language, the traditions, through teaching in our programs that we have here. And so we're doing everything we can to bring back the culture with our youth because that's the next generation. The only time that it made the difference now with the Salton Sea is the human factor. The human factor is when we have the farms around us and the irrigation and the pesticides and sewage from the, from the south and all of these things that go into the sea, which we never had before. So it, that changes everything. That changes, you know, the the toxins that gets in the air from the sea. So now we see it as, as a in a different perspective as a tribe. We see it as harmful, which we never saw before. The Salton Sea is a, is a, an event that occurs. You know, we we know that it occurs off and on. The flooding occurred throughout history, and you know, we know that through the petroglyphs and the history that we have as a people, that this area was, you know, it's always a desert, but and sometimes it floods and the tribe adapted to that. We fished, we lived through that because like, you know, we all understand that water is life. So it came and we thrived on it, but cases are growing, even with our tribe and our clinic of the elder and respiratory problems and the children with respiratory problems with asthma and different types of respiratory problems. So. Uh, those cases are growing and we're compiling those so we have uh, cases you know to say that it is evident from the sea and the dust that's getting in the air. My name is Thomas Tortez Jr. I'm the tribal, uh, tribal council chairman for Torres Martinez Desert Kauia Indian and uh, my job is to oversee the council which oversees the whole administration of the tribe. During the 1960s the Salton Sea was a dream an escape for the Hollywood elite. Even the Beach Boys recorded a song there. Laughter, beach balls, boats and yachts sailing the blue sea. Many homes were built, large real estate by the shore. But by the turn of the decade, the dream began to die. There was a strange, unpleasant odor. Fish were dying. Hollywood stopped coming, the homes wouldn't sell, and slowly, it was abandoned. Now, a new generation is born. Nosotros, hijos y hijas de inmigrantes. Cada día, nuestros padres se levantan para ir a trabajar, y los niños se levantan para ir a la escuela. El sueño, 
Todavía vive en ellos, en sus ojos, la esperanza de un mejor mañana. particularly special because it's very cultural and it has a lot of diversity, I think. Um, and I like the sense of community that we've built, um, whether it be through our um, organizations or even just like community events. I think that they, I don't know, like I, I, I just, I picture like the Eastern Coachella Valley like very vibrant because of, you know, farm workers because of the art that comes out of this valley. Even when I was in college, it was like a matter of, you know, always carrying like a little bit of my community wherever I went. So when I finished undergrad, I, I decided that the best thing for me was to come back and to try to um, continue to do advocacy work, um, whether it be through my career or just volunteer work. I just really feel the need that the next generation to go on and get an education and then eventually come back and be able to be a resource to, to our younger kids here in the area. My name is Berenice Venegas. Uh, most people call me Bere, and I am from Mecca, California, an unincorporated community in the Eastern Coachella Valley. Vicente Rodríguez Martínez, vengo de México, de la ciudad de Torreón, Coahuila, y vivo aquí en Termal. Vivía en México, era maestro de matemáticas, daba clases en una escuela secundaria en Chihuahua. La razón por la que me moví a los Estados Unidos fue que cuando yo estaba joven y estaba estudiando, me venía en temporadas para trabajar y juntar algún dinero para seguir estudiando. Ya que estaba terminando la, la escuela, de, decidimos venirnos para acá. Con el tiempo que estuve trabajando, Tenía pruebas para arreglar mi residencia y gracias a Dios la arreglé. Y después fui por mi esposa y, y también le arreglé su residencia. Somos residentes los dos. Trabajo en un parque de edad y tengo aquí como 26 años viviendo. Oh, aquí donde vivimos en el parqueadero de Traila. Cuando llueve se pone difícil para salir y ir a trabajar. A veces nos hemos atascado y no puede salir nuestro carro. Esa es, esa es la, única, la única cosa de vivir aquí, en un parqueadero, donde llueve mucho y, y, y pues así se pone de los dos o porque estamos en el fin. A veces se viene el, el horror hasta acá, porque an, antes nosotros pensábamos vivir allá en, en, en Salton sí, o por allá no está la Laguna Salada esa que llega a ver los malos olores por los pescados que se mueren. Y me extraña que aquí en Estados Unidos no haga nada porque es un, pa un país poderoso, es un país es autosuficiente. Yo no, yo no sé por qué no han tomado ninguna medida, porque la, la salud de la gente también cuenta mucho, debe de contar. Y, y no se le está poniendo nada de atención a ese lugar. Ahí compramos un terreno pensando que íbamos a vivir, pero miramos eso de, de pesos muertos, los malos olores, y mejor decidimos venderlo. Y, y ya, ya, no, ya no tenemos terreno para vivir ahí. Esperamos que un día a quien corresponda tomar medidas en eso, puede ser, es, es América, también Coachella, que mire lo que está pasando y 
ojalá se tomen medidas sobre este asunto que es muy importante para todo el Valle de Cochela. Aquí estamos muy a gusto, contentos, porque inclusive aquí nacieron mis hijas, aquí están naciendo mis, mis nietos y es un lugar donde estamos cómodos. Laguna Salada que un día puede afectar a la agricultura, la, la, la salud de nosotros, puede hacer gran, grandes males a, a la larga todo esto de la Laguna Salada. Y esperamos que un día hagamos todos conciencia, porque si, si todos nos juntáramos en realidad to, tomar la, dar la importancia a esto, la importancia que merece, pero que toda la comunidad hiciera conciencia sobre lo que está pasando aquí en el Valle de Cochela. ¿Qué hacen? Oh, ¿Sí están pudiendo? A ver, ¿cómo vas tú? Mi nombre es Alma Ochoa y soy de Michoacán, México. Ah, pues, vinimos de Michoacán en busca de una vida mejor. Este, trabajo en una escuela, soy este, asistente de maestra y en mis tiempos libres trato de estar involucrada en la comunidad, ayudando en diferentes eventos, apoyando a la comunidad. Y también este, en mi tiempo libre este, escribo pirecuas, que son canciones en purépechas. Mi nombre es María Posar. Lo que yo hago en la comunidad, pues trato de ayudar lo que pueda hacer yo. Si no hay un lugar en donde uh, poder hacer uh, la junta, la pueden hacer en mi casa. Eso es una gran oportunidad para que la gente pueda venir aquí. Y todo empezó gracias a, a los talleres de tejidos que hacía. Entonces, así conocí más gente, a uh, diferentes organizaciones que buscaban ayudar a mi comunidad. Y pues sí, fue una puerta muy grande que se abrió las clases de tejido. Y quisiera que se volvieran a seguir haciendo. Estoy enseñando la cultura, el tejido de la cultura purépecha. Es muy bonito porque la gente viene a aprender sobre mi tejido, pero no solamente se lleva el aprender de tejer, sino el aprender de que, que hay muchas cosas importantes que tenemos que hacer la comunidad. La parte favorita de escribir pirecuas es que uno entrega su alma este, a la hoja, a las letras cuando está escribiendo y pues le cantamos este, al amor, a la salud, al sol, a la vida. Es entregar todos nuestros sentimientos y compartirlo con nuestra gente. Para mí es importante para conservar la cultura purépeche es porque ya nuestros abuelos es una tradición que nos está pasando y es un recuerdo que nosotros, una tradición que nosotros quisiéramos pasárselos a nuestros hijos, a nuestras familias, a los más pequeños para que no se olviden de la cultura purépecha. Ah, tengo dos hijas, una de ocho años y una de un año. Entonces, y la comunidad de North Shore, pues ahorita estamos muy contentos porque se está haciendo el parque, está a futuro es una escuela y, y ahora ya empezamos con una iglesia para aquí, para la comunidad de North Shore. Entonces la comunidad de North Shore está muy contenta, pero aún así pues tenemos el enemigo al lado que es la laguna que se nos está secando. Pues lamentablemente sí, no, sí me está impactando muy mal. Por, el, por las alergias de los polvos, que los tóxicos que se está secando y, y a base de eso está produciendo mucho polvo, en estos lados hace, hace mucho viento, todo ese viento recoge el polvo y los trae a mi casa, a se ver, introducen por el aire acondicionado, entonces mi hija, mis hermanos, mis sobrinos, mis vecinitos inhalan ese aire, entonces lo que hace es que les lastima las fosas nasales y terminan sangrándose la nariz. You see, our fates are sealed with the sea, and that's what people don't see. As the toxic dust picks up, so do asthma rates and respiratory illnesses, and still this is our reality. The dream we cannot escape. There ain't no Hollywood, there is no cape to save us. Each day people wake up and stare death in the face and still manage to make a life to continue living. It takes a village 
to like raise a child and um definitely took a village to raise me and i do it out of a love for my community i do this work because i want to be included in that because like you know i have a voice too it was like a combination of my teachers and my parents and and my my like co-workers when i worked in the uwa you know like um it was a like a compilation of all those things and i made it to college and like you take all those resources and leave and become a doctor, a lawyer, or whatever you're gonna become, like a community organizer in LA. Like, all right, that's cool, but like, what about the community organizers North Shore needs? Uh, my name is Nere Guadalupe Montes. I'm from North Shore, and uh, my family immigrated here from Monterrey, Nuevo León. So the name of the group is Ballet Folklorico Sangre Vera, the Desert Mirage. The kids voted on that because every kid that has ever danced for us, their parents have one thing in common. They work in the fields. You know, as a matter of fact, my mother was a laborer. She worked 50 plus years as a seamstress, different type of labor, but you know, still labor intensive. You know, she worked till she developed arthritis in her fingers and got cataracts in her eyes. Uh, and some of these parents, man, I, I drive home, I drive home, I drive to work. Some of these parents are working from sun up, sun down. I know people, you know, like my father-in-law that is still working. He's 65 years old and he can't afford to retire. He, he's laboring away. And so as a way to honor those people that work their lives, I mean, they literally work till they drop dead. We decided to name the group after them. Uh, my name is Gustavo Adolfo Sandoval. I am originally from Los Angeles, California, specifically South Central. So de um, Sangre Guatemalteca. My parents are both from Guatemala. The, I grew up in, in, you know, in the inner city. I grew up in poverty. You know. And I've been teaching for 21 years all in the Coachella Valley Unified School District. And I coach football, I coach track, I've coached basketball, and I dance for Clorico. And I met my wife here in the Coachella Valley. She also you know, works for the district. I've been living in North Shore now for five years. I've always lived in, in the community I work in. The one thing, because I never know if I make an impact. I've been doing this 20 some years and I just don't know. But if someone can come back and say, I learned to be a better person because of him, I did my job. If my son can grow up to respect women, respect his community, and learn to give those that need help, I did my job. And if I can impact those kids in that way, then I can die in peace. I did my job. Siento que una forma que podemos proveer recursos para la gente alrededor del salto en sí es que se presenten las oportunidades para que los jóvenes vayan este, a la universidad y ya después de que se gradúen y tengan su licenciatura, que regresen al valle y nos ayuden a comunicarnos con los políticos, 
uh, para podernos entender. There's people here who have a lot of wealth of knowledge and just because, you know, they're migrants or working in the fields or working as housekeepers or working in grocery stores doesn't mean that they don't have creative solutions to environmental problems that impact their everyday life, you know? You know what? We need to help ourselves so that the future generations don't have to deal with the stuff that we're dealing with, you know? And for the Salton Sea, they need to fix that. That is a crime against humanity if they let that go. You know, they need to, if basic human decency dictates that that needs to be fixed because we're talking lives. A lot of lives are going to get lost. Not, maybe not me, you know, I'll probably be, by the time that dries up, I'll be dead and gone. But my kids, your kids, her kids, they're the ones going to deal with the problem. And yeah, I'm going to tell you one thing, that sea goes, you're looking at a major ghost town, North Shore, Mecca, Desert Shores, all those small towns that are around the Salton Sea are going to die out, you know. Todo el estado de California tendría que enfocarse en nuestra laguna porque es algo muy hermoso que se está muriendo poco a poco. Si él hablara, él nos estuviera diciendo, sálvenme, sálvenme. En un futuro nosotros éramos los que vamos a estar así. Entonces yo les diría, tomen un poquito de su tiempo y, y asistan a las juntas, asistan a las juntas, porque muchas de veces hay juntas pero la gente no sabe o no se les informa bien y, este, y no van. Entonces, por eso los políticos toman las decisiones que toman. También es mucha culpa por nosotros porque no asistimos a las juntas. Yo diría al respet respetando sus decisiones, pero la decisión de la gente es más importante que la de ellos porque es la comunidad la que sufre las consecuencias. Environmental health and an environmental justice are very important. Um, because it directly affects, you know, everyone's health. And a big issue that I have seen with the Salt and Sea is that it's not accessible. These conversations are a lot of the time not accessible to community members. And I think that it would help if, you know, we had accessibility, whether it's transportation or, you know, whatever it be, to get folks out there um, to, so that they're able to understand what's going on and um, how we're able to, to address the matter. Entonces me extraña que en Estados Unidos pase eso y no se tomen medidas y solamente tomen medidas en los lugares donde viven las personas que tienen dinero, que son ricas, millonarias, en los country club, ahí las carreteras están sin ningún hoyo, sin ningún tope ni nada y aquí en la ciudad se puede decir que marginados, aquí de vez en cuando arreglan las carreteras y menos aquí el parqueadero donde estamos para salir. Y, y alrededor de esta laguna hay mucha agricultura, hay cítricos, hay este, sandías, hay verduras, melón, aquí se da de todo en el valle, pero eso se puede, se puede llegar a, a perder, la gente puede abandonar y se puede ir, y, y si no se toman medidas se puede llegar a perder esto en algunos cuantos años más. George Martinez is proud to be part of the Salton Sea Authority. Recently, we've come to an agreement that the 10-year plan is a, a separation of the sea. And once we create this living river, uh, you'll have an, in, you know, an inflow, you have an outflow, and it just creates you know, a current through it. Uh, that's, that's pretty much the 10-year plan in a nutshell. Half of the Torres Martinez reservation is under the sea, 11,000 acres. So uh, we have, I believe, water rights, even though it's above the land, right? So that's one of the things that I just want to relay that tribes, not only tribes, but people always should have their water rights. It's a part of life. They, you know, they inherit the land, you have those water rights. Those are, you know, uh, creator-given rights to you as far as life. Say um, our goal is to thrive as a people and to carry on. Our most important thing is to carry on our customs and traditions and live as a people on this land free as we always have. Vivimos el sueño que muchos han olvidado. Al lado de un lago que muchos han abandonado. Aunque muchos se han movido del estado, 
nosotros estamos aquí. Cada día nos levantamos con esperanza que el dinero nos llene la panza. Aunque el viento tierra nos lanza, nosotros estamos aquí. Pescados muertos cubren la playa, con el calor hasta uno se desmaya. Pero nunca tiraremos la toalla, porque nosotros estamos aquí. Los indígenas dicen que todo este valle antes le pertenecía al mar. Y algún día a él va a regresar. Pero hasta entonces la lucha seguirá, porque nosotros estamos aquí.